Helldivers 2 is staring down the barrel of an invasion, and I believe it is the Illuminate. No matter how much the Ministry of Lies tries to distract us, it is clear there are now cloaked ships in the sky of some planets. And more than that, the automatons have deployed what look like Star Wars-inspired walkers as well as gunships, so maybe even they are gearing up for something, and the developers have pushed out a pretty significant update. They increased the level cap of Helldivers to such a high number that surely something is on the way. They've also fixed a few bugs and annoyances while introducing some new bugs and crashes. This is one of the challenges of a live service game. There's this pressure to fix problems quickly, which can inevitably lead to more problems as you push out a patch too soon and maybe you create more issues. But regardless of what gun is buffed or nerfed right now, the important thing is big things are coming and they seem to be gearing up the game for those. Now, I do put all of the good info right at the start of the video. It's a longer video, but I open with a monologue so you don't have to go searching for what I think. Then I discuss it with the live audience. If you want to be here for these streams, make sure hit subscribe and the bell button. Also hit the like button. It helps out the video. If you want to get into my extra content, see how we plan these shows, as well as Friday night streams with my wife. Make sure and join and pick a membership at that $6 tier. We'd love to see you in the extra content. Well, it seems that Helldivers 2 is prime for some major changes, updates, and an invasion. Now, if you've not been paying attention, maybe you took a break from the game, some pretty significant things have happened. The devs pushed out an update that I think points to some pretty big things coming. But the game itself also continues to have some strange developments inside of it. Ships are showing up. I think that's a clear sign of impending invasion. We've got walkers and gunships now showing up on automaton planets. The blue lights and the blue beams that were flying bugs, well, all that's just normal now. Major orders are being failed. Supply lines are being requested by the community so we can see exactly how these planets are connected. And it feels like the game is on the precipice of a big shift and a big change. So I want to give a quick backstory. I want to firmly establish why we cannot trust the developers, we cannot trust the ministry, but I also want to look at what happened in the game recently. I don't see the point in going down into the specifics of like each weapon buff and nerf plenty of people have done that already but in light of all of that is going on i want to tell you what i think is going to happen make some sort of predictions about what's going to take place what the devs seem to be preparing for so very quickly the backstory on this not long ago we were seeing these blue lights or blue beams in the game some of them were even attacking automatons and players we saw drop ships being taken out by these things players were even being killed by these blue beams now the devs and the ministry assured us that they weren't real they did the same thing with the flying bugs and the termicide now i tried to tell her buddy that the termicide was helping the bugs to evolve and we know they right now it's been basically confirmed by the ceo of arrowhead and the ministry that the termicide is why the terminids are now able to fly now why is this backstory so important well for a few reasons they are likely going to lie to us about what is happening and what is coming so in the words of fox Mulder, trust no one or at the very least don't trust the ministry and don't trust the developers well why well what's happening in the game is going to require hell divers to accurately report on it for starters with the ships that are now in the skybox. They're actually in the skybox of some of the planets. Well, we didn't hear this from the ministry or the developers. According to thegamer.com, Helldivers 2 players spot cloaked warships above automaton planets. Now, according to the gamer, those blue beams were likely coming from these ships. They say, troops have been attacked by blue lasers while on missions to liberate enemy worlds, a signature weapon of the aquatic Illuminate alien species. Now, the gamer also seems to know where the Illuminate are located. They say, the Illuminate are located south of Super Earth, so if they join the fold, it would have been assumed they would push from the south, filling out the empty space on the galactic map. Now, in light of this, the automatons may be gearing up for defense because there's these new walkers showing up as well as gunships on the planets. You may not have seen these, but there are clips floating around. As I've said, we cannot rely on the Ministry to keep us informed. These reports are coming from the field, from the front line, and there's this new thing called a Factory Strider, according to PC Gamer, an early field report from Reddit user Capt Pluto suggests the Factory Strider is essentially a mobile fortress for the automatons. It packed large laser cannons, mounted miniguns, and a factory capable of spawning devastators on the move. Okay. 
the automaton sorry i've been saying it wrong i do that all the time i can't be the only one that does that this to me signals war prep for the automatons okay i think they're gearing up to defend themselves the fact that these ships showed up and now we have new automaton units i think that has to be seen as not just a coincidence at the very least maybe they're increasing their defenses and they're not just worried about hell divers anymore now according to the early field report the worst part about these striders these walkers is that they don't have easy to find vents and the walkers are not the only thing showing up and attacking players more from pc gamer new gunships are attacking divers in swarms despite our assumptions that the cloaked ships in the skies of robot space were gunships the true culture the true culprits are smaller and they travel in packs not as much is known about these but they fire lasers and missiles now again this sounds like the automatons are increasing their defenses and their forces now all of this is just happening organically in the game. There were zero alerts from the ministry. There were zero alerts from the devs that this would happen. This is another reason to not trust them. They are not as informed as we are. But from the developer front, they did push out a patch. Now, I'm not going to go through, as I said, the tweaks, the buffs, and the nerfs. It was a pretty long list. The reason I don't really care to do that is it's always going to be a moving target. People are really upset that they mess with a certain gun, and they're hoping that that thing can be walked back. Well, since that stuff's always changing, I would rather talk about like what's this actually leading to in the game. Because the most important thing to take note of this happened in conjunction with all these other strange developments in the game is that they raised the level cap from 50 to 150 now some have said this is simply just to give people a new number to chase others have said that democracy never sleeps so they should just keep raising the number and then obviously many are speculating that this means something big is coming to the game so let me give you sort of my position on all of this and then i'll give you my prediction on uh what i think is coming first my position to me it's pretty obvious that the warships in the skybox are the illuminate this is similar to the flying bugs there were early clues the blue beams the lasers shooting down from the sky all of a sudden they're taking out drop ships and then the hell divers you know that were getting taken out i think this is why the automatons have released gunships as well as walkers what better way to defend your drop ships than to have basically defense units on the planets to stop this from happening or to maybe even take out the warships that are in the sky so it's only a matter of time before what i think is going to be an invasion or some type of an attack that will start to begin we know that the automatons were trying to free the cyborgs on cyberstan recently that's potentially because maybe they were sensing this incoming threat and they wanted the cyborgs to help them now since that effort failed they have deployed these walkers and these gunships now i think the walkers and the gunships are signed that we will be getting new content and new major orders very soon and i'm going to circle back to this when i make some predictions about new content because i've got some ideas of what they could be doing but for now this is i think going to be similar to the flying bugs and the termicide there's going to be new content new story new major orders all of that's likely on the way in relation to these new units showing up. Now, lastly, before I get to my predictions, let's just talk about the level cap. The question of like, why put such a big jump in the level cap from 50 to 150? Now, I disagree that this is just like a, hey, chase the number. You know, this is just busy work for the grinders. I do not think that is the case, especially considering... It was retroactive. There's some hardcore players that have already jumped into the low 100s because they've just continued to play and they've amassed a lot of XP. But I think it's clear sign that they will be adding new stratagems. There really isn't any other good reason to do this if you're going to add 100 extra levels. Okay, that flows right into my predictions. First, I think we may be looking at the beginning of endgame content coming to the game. With a level cap increase of 100 more levels and a larger enemy unit or larger enemy unit showing up, it's undeniable that the likelihood of a new faction is almost here. I think they're gearing up for something maybe more structured, maybe more endgame focus. And for a while, I've said they could easily add content that has more layers to it and more mechanics. The termicide missions that you're watching right here, it was maybe a small glimpse into what's possible. You've got this big, large area. You've got three objective points. Instead of just holding one position for a certain amount of time, there were this you know traversal aspect of it. you're going to all these different areas and you had to actively defend something rather than just trying to stay alive like the bugs could actually work against 
your progress rather than just kill you. Now, I think the tension point of having hell divers manning a station, putting in codes, that would be perfect for raid-like or dungeon-like content, especially if you have to keep putting in the codes. I've even thought a really cool mechanic would be, hey, we have to protect this station and you got to vent you know the station or it's going to explode and kill everybody like a wiping mechanic so somebody's got to keep putting in codes to vent you know the heat or something like that but the thing about that is you would need to defend that position so you'd have somebody that would be having to put those codes in fairly regularly and not making mistakes to keep the team alive but then you'd also have to have teammates keeping that person alive so they could keep doing it you could also create encounters where you've got the walkers or these larger enemy units they could be taken down with deployable weapons or stratagems that maybe these deployable weapons and stratagems they only can be called down in that part of the map or only when you go on these particular aspirational or end game missions the foundational parts of this game are perfect for adding layers of complexity and mechanics for end game content and the more the enemies evolve or upgrade their forces the more I feel that the end game or the aspirational content is likely on the way beyond just raising the difficulty I think that's great I know know people have really liked that but I'd like to see something that's a little bit more complex instead of just making like oh the spawn rate of the enemies is way up and it's just going to be insane and that you know you're, you're sort of getting overwhelmed I think the unknown aspect here is how this all plays out when there's just more than two factions in the game there's been debates about people who won't leave the creek right you creakers just don't care about the rest of the game well eventually you can't play there you got to find somewhere else to play right once you actually secure the planet but i also think once you suddenly have multiple factions instead of just two you know terminids and automatons uh they have been keeping us pretty busy you know what happens when the illuminate show up and they start pushing from the south what if these cyborgs show up what if they get liberated and they start attacking from the north now obviously joel and the sort of the game master or the dungeon master team they can ensure that it doesn't overwhelm us to the point of futility right and then super earth's overrun and then nobody really wants to play a game where you just sort of feel like everybody you know everybody's failing they also have to consider how often they want us to fail major orders many hell divers cited the lack of supply line information with the most recent major order failure basically if you don't understand how this worked a few major orders ago i said this was a problem people and players do not know how the planets are connected i didn't know how the planets were connected until somebody told me so you end up targeting the wrong planet thinking that well i've got a straight line from planet a to b to c when you actually don't always have that now thankfully the devs have said that the mock-up from a community member that added sort of like arrows to the map they said it was very close to something they were already considering doing basically arrows are lines making it very clear which planets are connected so if you need to to make a triangle to get to the target planet instead of a straight line you know and guessing and relying on third-party apps or websites or reddit that would be in the game so overall I i think big things are coming the level cap points to new stratagems the ships point to an invasion and a new faction and the new bigger and larger enemy units they point to new content and new major orders right now it's not really a matter of if these things happen it's just really a matter of when but That's just what I think. What do you think? So let me give you my closing thoughts and conclusion on this. The biggest question I have about this game now is how can they keep this up? Will they be able to have changes, enemy updates, new units, and whatever else they have planned and all the stuff they've been doing? They've been doing this at a cadence of almost like weekly, maybe every other week. Like, is that sustainable? At one level, it sort of feels necessary for a game like this to have something happening every week or, you know, at the bare minimum every other week, maybe at least once a month. But it could also set a bad precedent and expectation if they can't maintain that rhythm. If if players start to feel like, well, they were updating the game a bunch when it first came out and now they're kind of not, that's going to be something they have to consider. The second thing I want to say is, I am currently still plugging away at Rise of the Ronin, and since I can only play for about an hour every night, maybe sometimes more, 
I appreciate getting messages from some of you telling me that I'm abandoning democracy. Just leave me alone while I'm playing. (laughs) But seriously, my time in Helldivers 2 has decreased, but it's only because I'm trying to beat another game. Like, I just watched some footage from my own streams right now, streaming to you. It really makes me want to jump back in. I kind of already feel the pull. I think that's something that this game gets right. If you haven't played in a while, you know, a few clips, just booting up the game, hearing that music, it really makes me want to run a few missions. So my conclusion is this. While the peaks on Steam right now are hitting no longer in the 400,000 range, right? They're hitting about the 200, 250,000 concurrent peaks. That's actually a very great sign for the game's longevity because we're just a few days away from this game being out for two whole months. They are certainly proving the concept. The thing I'm most curious about is If they decide to add aspirational content, is it not just going to be them increasing difficulty or, you know, throwing in new units? Given that with enough time, we're all going to have the same weapons and the same stratagems, they would likely need to introduce weapons or stratagems that maybe only show up in the aspirational content, so it sort of is tuned to that, like, hey, we're going to give you this extra power, we're going to make you stronger with weapons that are only on these missions or stratagems that are only on these missions and then the event and the activity would be tuned to that increase in power if not they'd have to really create aspirational content around our current power threshold which might be tough because the higher level content has already you know pretty regularly been finessed and mastered by the more hardcore players either way they approach it i like how they're handling it right i'm going to continue say you know this game's great there's a ton more coming just don't trust the ministry and don't trust the devs. But those are just my thoughts. Now it's time to hear your thoughts. And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Make sure you go through the morning ritual of uh, smashing that like button. We've been covering a variety of topics lately. Helldivers 2 coverage and gameplay is going to see that slight decrease. We still are wanting to let you guys know what's going on in the game and cover it, but if you're really wanting more regular updates on this game, you're going to want to make sure and subscribe to the Helldivers 2 updates channel. Like all things, games have their time in the sun and we, we can no longer give this game multiple streams a week like we were doing and so we appreciate you guys and your support we appreciate your uh your engagement with the channel and smashing like and subscribe but if you're wanting like almost daily updates and shorts and things like that we have a channel dedicated to that the name of the channel is literally hell divers 2 updates uh two spot from pwh down morning benedict lono democracy thank you so much for the two dollar super chat tip and we had a gifted member during the show open way of the lao han shot first and so did you we had a huge day yesterday getting us really really close to the current goal the current goal is 2300 members and you guys absolutely crushed it yesterday let me give you a bit of a member update we are going to have my wife play this friday night she is going to play um, my I blanked. Stellar Blade. I was like, we were going to do a Rage game this week, but it's going to be Stellar Blade. Currently, we are at 2218, so you guys are very close to the 2300 goal, only about 80 away. That's easy to hit when I'm doing 5 every 25, so thank you guys so much for being here this morning. Make sure you are smashing the like button. Let us know what you think. These ships in, in, in the skybox, like, are we facing down an invasion? Is that what is coming next? We will uh, we will obviously be interested if it is the Illuminate, if it's a completely com- different, uh, you know, different faction. I think we're all assuming it's the Illuminate, but the Illuminate might not be uh, ready to come into the game just yet. So it could be something completely different. There's also the new units in the game. I think that's also something to consider is that, you know, they've got these units that they're adding. Yo, Rock and Robin gifts some member and says, come on, we can easily hit this goal. There it is. Second gifted member of the day. Only need about 80 members today. Not really even 80. You probably only need about 75. Thank you so much because I'll give 15 on top. Don't trust the ministry. Guy thinks he's Lono Stradamus saying bugs can fly. We never know bugs can fly. Listen, man, they were in denial about the bugs being able to fly. That's really what you got to question. Why were they telling you that? You're my boy. I appreciate that. Like, I personally think that the, the invasion might be something that we end up not really taking part in maybe they just do cutscenes or something it would be really interesting if all of a sudden you're going to automaton planets and you have like two types of enemies 
to fight, if that makes sense. Yo, good morning, Drumman. Like, I'm not sure about that. Like, are they just going to have them invade and then all of a sudden they show up on the map? Or are they going to invade on the automaton planets? Like, I just don't know. PWH Town says, single member train, let's get it. Chair Bruce Lee with 20 months says, I just played before work. Four people extracted on the ship, but only three folks made it back to orbital. Keep working on that. Yeah, they're, they're trying to, I think that's one of the dangers here. P-Dub H-Town putting his money where his mouth is. He asks for a single gifted train and he gifts a member. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, dude. That's one of the dilemmas of a game like this, um, is that... They have to do pretty quick updates. Like, they've introduced some pretty frustrating bugs. And for weeks, like, every time you booted up the game, your loadout was wrong. You know, tutorial messages were still popping up. Um, You know, and so from my perspective, them trying to fix that, I get it. You want to fix it quickly, but then you end up introducing new problems. Like, you end up introducing new issues. And... You know, I I don't necessarily know what the solution is because I remember when this happened in Fortnite, it was like they were trying to update that game very regularly and there were similar, you know, similar problems with they would reintroduce bugs or introduce a brand new bug or a bug that had been fixed three patches ago came back. Your progress is saved if you crash on extract. The only thing you lose is samples at the moment. Okay, so you don't get the samples, but you get everything else. Eugene says, we had no issues extracting. I wonder what the issue is for others. Yeah, there were issues with uh, people saying, like, as soon as they got on the dropship, it would crash. There were others saying, like, once it goes to extract, they were crashing. I saw a variety of reports this morning about it. There wasn't, there didn't seem to be any consistency. Um, I mean, they they introduce a bug, and then in their efforts to try to fix it, they're gonna they're gonna probably break something else. That's just gonna be the way that it goes. We had no issue. Oh, I already read that. Um, they never said that. Bugs could always fly. Everyone knows that. Anti-revisionist history is treason. The Ministry of Truth is in chat right now. We, they said, we said bugs couldn't fly because they couldn't. Yes, you didn't just say bugs couldn't fly. You said everybody know bugs can't fly. That simply isn't true. Samples are the most important thing. Well, yeah, samples are the most important thing. He was just indicating that, like, you don't lose everything. You still get progress, right? XP is important if you're trying to level up to unlock stratagems. Uh, re- requisitions important. Well, I guess would requisition no, that wouldn't be included in that. Do you get those right away? If you you know you lose that currency, you know as long as you get your medals and your XP, you know samples are a bummer. But I don't know if they're the most important thing because medals are to work your way through the 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 battle passes or the 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 I can't ever remember the, the war bonds. You know the medals are how you work through the war bonds and the currency is how you buy stratagems. So. Samples, I wouldn't say samples are the most important thing. It depends on where you are in the grind. You know, if somebody's trying to get to level 25, not getting their XP would be pretty irritating. Like, the fact that they still get their XP is pretty nice. I mean, obviously, you don't want the game to crash at all. There's not really any consolation when a game is crashing. Lots of crashes yesterday. Only had, like, an hour to play last night. I managed to make it through one round. Samples are the most important thing until they aren't. I've been at a sample sample camp for a sample cap for a month. I already have all the upgrades. Right. And if you're not really going for samples and you're primarily going for XP and medals, I mean it might not matter, right? If you end a run and, you know, there's one or two samples that you don't get, that might not be, you know, as big of a deal. So I personally think that they need to just take a break if they can the problem is is you can't take a break on patches when you're introducing crashes if that makes sense like if it's minor things or minor problems or like buffs and nerfs you can kind of leave that alone for a little bit if you're if you're not confident in the patch that you're pushing out but there's gonna be a level of urgency when you have people saying like, hey, I can't even play the game. I keep crashing. I can't even extract. Um, You know, that's going to add urgency. And the problem with urgency and patching is that you end up pushing out updates and patches that aren't ready. You end up pushing out things that are just, they're just going to make, you know, bigger problems. Yo, Trevin gifts a member and adds to the single train that P-Dub H-Town asked for and takes us to four members on the day. Thank you so much for doing that, Trevin. If you guys are enjoying the show, man, make sure and hit that like button. Make sure and hit subscribe as well if you're new to the channel uh, and you've never been here before. 
It's a great opportunity to talk in the chat when you hit subscribe. The problem is that I don't find team playing randoms for higher difficulties. Most of them just shoot around and trigger breach after breach. It's tiresome if you want super uranium. That's always going to be an issue when you go into higher level content in games like this is you end up with people that have no clue what they're doing and they can sort of ruin it. You know, um, that's that's I think that's always going to be a challenge when you have you don't really gate content like people can just sort of match make that was always an issue in in end game content and other games that I've played is like you get into end game content I remember this happened in Outriders quite a bit Willie Kale joins a single gifted member train thank you so much Willie Kale and puts us at 5 out of 25 see if one of the big boys want to come in and disrupt your guys attempt at a single train and drop that 20 bomb that's a nice layup thank you Willie Kale I've lost probably about 10 total super samples from crashing, and I can't upgrade anymore without them, says JC. Yeah, see, I would just stop playing if that was happening to me. If all I needed was a particular sample type, and I wasn't able to get them because the game kept crashing, yeah, I'd be done. I'd be like, I'm going to wait for them to patch this. Um, The key is to fix other issues with the game with which will in turn fix the other problems the game's experiencing. I mean, what you just said doesn't make any sense. You just said they have to fix things to fix things. I think that's the issue when you're trying to fix crashes is you're trying to fix them quickly. Yo, good morning, Feed. Uh, Fixing a crash is not like fixing a gun that's not working right. Like, if there's a gun that's not working right and it's not registering the right levels of damage, no big deal. People will just start using something else. But when you have people that can't even play the game or complete missions or they can't even get onto their ship or they can't match make like all the problems that they've had for the last two months i think so much of it is just because they're trying to respond to the scale and the 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 demand yo paco gets a red badge 24 months and a vip thank you so much for me, Helldivers replace Call of Duty when I get up in the morning. I play Helldivers before I go to work. It does have that nice cadence of you can play the game in a, in a quick, small dose. Like, you know roughly how long each mission is going to take you, and you can kind of set aside that time, quickly jump in, get some stuff done, and then get out. Luckily, I was able to get three last night with no issues. Adding content every week and trying to fix stuff constantly is just going to be new issues all of the time. I think that's another aspect of it that I haven't even touched on. Like, if they want to maintain this cadence of, like, something new is happening every week, uh, you know, something something exciting is happening, whether it's a new enemy or a change or a video that they want to put out or new units on the planets, I think that's another issue is that the, the, the game is constantly in flux. And when you do that, you're, you're going to make it really, really hard to have stability within the game. You're going to make it really difficult for people to, you know... You're going to make it difficult for the game itself to sort of get grounded. And I, I wonder if that's something that they're always going to be facing. Like, the very nature of this game is that they kind of have to update it on a regular basis, whether it's once a week or every other week. They can't just, like, all of a sudden go dormant. And when they're doing that, they're actively going to be potentially causing problems um, within the game. I really enjoyed my time I spent in Helldivers 2. The evolving world is nice, but I fell off after upgrading everything and maxing samples. Well, I think the bump to 150 level cap, John, is because they have big stuff coming. I don't think you just level... I don't think you just increase the level cap by, you know, from 50 to 150 if they don't have plans to introduce some 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 new stuff. There's got to be new stratagems coming. I don't think they just gave people a new 100 levels to grind just so that you have something to grind. That doesn't make any sense. Because what are you going to do, if that's the only purpose of it, are you ever going to be able to introduce new stratagems that even create a grind, or is it just going to be the grind for currency? Like, if everybody's got the opportunity now for, like, the next month or so to get well above 25 or well above 50, then what are you going to do? Are you going to introduce stratagems that need to be, you need to be level 250 to get? Nobody's going to want to do that. You're going you're gonna to spread out the spectrum of player level way too much you're gonna have to cluster your stratagem level requirements they're gonna have to be clustered in like the low 50s and low 100s you can't suddenly ask the player base to get to like level 120 
to get a stratagem when the vast majority of the player base is probably not even at 25 yet or maybe they just got to 25 generally speaking in games like this the vast majority of the player pool they are not at max level they are not hitting the high levels they just aren't they usually just kind of take their time like i think i'm 27 or something like that i put in 75 hours into this game and i'm only a couple levels past the the maximum level that you need for the highest stratagems like you don't need to go to level 50 at all i'll be back hard when the grind is turned back on says john it's it's a me issue not a game issue well it is a you issue but that's also a game issue john i wouldn't i wouldn't let them completely off the hook you got to know that people are going to play your game like that and you have to have spectrum of engagement you have to have spectrum of engagement what are people going to do who can only play a couple hours a night what are people going to do who play four or five hours a day like that's always going to be an issue with a game like this I don't ever see myself going to level 100 says Eugene the game is not that engaging I mean it would naturally happen from you playing Eugene like you can't stop leveling and be like no I don't want to like if you're playing the game it's going to happen it just you you wouldn't care to focus on it you wouldn't be like oh i'm level 77 i better keep playing to get to 100 if you were going to play something else or if you would kind of felt like you had tapped out with the game like you're like yeah i've done enough i've played enough i've seen enough isn't it a bit worrying if the leveling will always be pushed and chased well that's always a question with the live service game that's always a, a, a uh that's always a mystery what are they going to do to keep you coming back? I do think that leveling, I said this in Destiny, I'll say it now, leveling is not content. But if you're going to have leveling attached to something, like you can, I think you can make leveling a part of the content more passively. But again, the challenge is going to be they retroactively awarded XP to people. So there's already people in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, even some people are up into the low 100s, all right? So if you've got new stratagems planned for six level 60, 70, and 80, people have, people are have either already got them or it's going to feel so incredibly out of reach, the rest of the player base is going to be like, I can't do that, right? Now, something they could do, something they could do is when they raise a level cap like this if they introduce new stratagems and they say hey guys we're starting a brand new thing we've got a whole new setup for war bonds and stratagems and enemies what they would do is just raise everybody to level 50 and just say you're all level 50 now now you have to do the new grind that'd be the only way to do it because if not you would just leave people behind they would be like well i guess i'm never getting the new stuff you don't want new content to make people feel like engagement with your game is futile. You don't want people feeling like, well, what's the point? I'm not even going to be able to get the new stuff. The new stuff's so far out of reach. It doesn't even trigger in their mind as like a possibility. I'm at level 18. I need my samples to keep upgrading my ship. If I lose them every time, I try and leave a mission due to crash. I won't play till it's fixed. Yeah, I wasn't trying to act like losing samples isn't a big deal. I was just saying, well, at the very least, you get all of the other stuff. It, I, I 100% agree with you. People are not going to play a game where when they're actively when they're actively playing, people are not going to play a game where they're not getting their stuff. That just isn't going to be the case. If you were playing like a looter shooter, you know, and you got to the end and you killed the boss and then the game crashed and you didn't get all the loot, nobody would say, well, you got the XP, your character leveled up. Like that wouldn't be any kind of consolation. New mission types would go a long way. That's where I really feel like if they're going to be adding new units, larger units, walkers, gunships, things like that, even the even the termicide mission, I feel like the termicide mission pointed to this aspirational content. If you can give me content that is more than just go stand here and just don't die, right? It need there needs to be more layers to it and I believe they have all the parts to do it. Like if you tell me you got to stand here and put these codes in every so often or this thing's going to blow up and it's going to kill your entire team, right? You create wiping mechanics. 
So I'm sitting there having to do that, right? I'm having to do that. I'm periodically shooting, you know, bugs or uh, automatons. And then I put the code in again. Well, you got to defend me. I can't do that by myself. Like that creates a great tension point. And maybe while I'm doing that, there's another, you know, group on the team. Like you break up into pairs and they're running around and they're turning on these, these uh, mountable guns or something. And once you do all of that, now you've got to fight a boss. Like there's an actual giant boss and you're kind of like going from station to station and using those deployable guns, using those weapons on the boss, like particular spots that have to be targeted and only maybe one person can use it and one person can help them. So the other two people are tasked with defending that location and keeping them alive. Maybe there's things that the boss is doing that if you if you shoot it before he gets it off, then he can't attack you. You know what I'm saying? the automatons yeah i know throughout the throughout the monologue i switch between automatons and automatons it's so hard not to do automatons i just i see that word and that's what my brain automatically says and when i did the show with 30 and still gaming um recently he was doing the same thing like it's just it's so hard not to say that it's like a lot of people pronounce it that way now, i'm not saying i should it's just my brain flips from both pronunciations So apparently I've had Helldivers 2 running for 162 hours, but I have 60 hours in mission time. So you got 100 hours standing around in the ship? That doesn't seem right. That seems way overboard. Well, you know what, Liquid? How much time did you spend trying to get into the game during those couple of weeks where nobody could play? Like, were you just leaving the game on and waiting to get in? That could have really clocked a lot of non-mission time hours, because the game is open. Does that make sense? Sounds like a skill issue. I mean, you would know all about that. I mean, I I guess that uh, takes one to know one, right? I played very casually. I've unlocked just about everything interesting. I pushed to level 7 for supers, but once I had them, I went back to four and five as it's more chill. Yeah, I'm that way when I play with, uh, if I play Helldivers 2 with my wife and some people after the streams, like in the evenings, or whenever I've streamed the game on the channel, I'm like, hey man, I, I'm, I'm not going to set it above a four. Like, I'm just trying to chill. You know what I mean? I completely forgot about the cues that we had. Yeah, I'd be curious how many hours you logged doing that. Like, if every day those first two weeks let's just say every day you sat in queue for two hours i mean that's just in that first week you could have gotten anywhere from 20 to 40 padded hours on your on your play time so if you subtract that 60 hours on mission 60 hours out of mission that still would be pretty long to not actually be doing anything just like standing on the ship and not actively engaging. Guys, if you're just tuning in, we're talking about the latest Helldivers 2 update. I think invasion is imminent. We've got these ships in the skyline of some of the automaton planets. I believe it is the Illuminate. Uh, The Illuminate have been here for a while. I think they were foreshadowed by the blue beams that were coming from the sky. Now there's cloaked ships in the sky. Uh, make sure and smash the like button. Let's try and get 40 more likes on the video. We got a good turnout today. And uh, if you can get us to 200 likes, that helps this video find more people. And don't forget about the memberships. You can join on your own or gift some. And that helps us get closer to the next goal. And then I'll gift some as well. I played it for like a day and it wasn't for me. I see why people like it, but it's not for me. Somebody says, I swear I played Helldiver difficulty once, never again. It was just insane spawns. Loco says, I'm 92 now. I see a lot of folks who don't get complete missions or lots of deaths during missions talking about the game needs this and that. Get the missions completed on high level with low deaths. Well, I'm not going to say that there's a... I don't want to gatekeep feedback. I think feedback can always be helpful. If there are large portions of the community that are just not engaging with the higher level content and they're sort of complaining about certain things... I'm not saying you do what they ask, but I think their input could be helpful. If if 25%, let's just throw out a number, if 25% of the user base has never gone past difficulty 6, you got to ask the question, is that okay? Is that good long term? Are they going to keep coming back? They may answer that question and say yes. Yo, the bright side gifts a member and takes us to six on the day. We are about 80 members away from the current goal of 2300. If we get 2300, if you guys know the game Jump King, 
There is a game where you play Jump King. It's it's a different game, but it's the same style. And you play it with another person. I will have to play that game with my wife next week if you guys hit 2,300 members. It's called a Rage Game. We're going to do a Rage Game incentive. Now, this Friday night, if you want to be a member and want to watch my wife play Stellar Blade, you're going to want to be at the non-gifted tier. You're going to want to be at the $6 tier or higher. Yo, thank you, Patrick Q, for gifting a member. So when you get a gifted member, you get to sample the content, get in our Discord. You get to sample some live AMA Q&A in our stream here at the end of the stream typically is when we do that and uh yeah what discord is literally is is discord having trouble we typically have people in discord uh oh i can't type in it's to unlock it says it's unlocked hang on i was like why is nobody typing in the discord lockdown end it doesn't seem like it's working um there's a way to do this uh permissions uh everyone there okay okay all right now try i was like dude why is nobody talking in the discord the reforge bot didn't actually end the lockdown i was like this is the weirdest experience i've ever had i was like literally breathe the free air again there you go i was like what is happening it worked no it didn't work i manually went in and changed the setting on that channel the bot did not do that that was me you need the whole team to play together for the higher difficulties which isn't promising when you're lfging yeah or if you're matchmaking for sure I kept the game on for days originally. I got 100 plus hours of doing nothing. Right, if you were just like trying to get in. Human type person says, After we took Troost, we learned that the automatons were broadcasting outside of the galaxy. We pushed the Illuminate out of the galaxy before. Maybe they weren't here before, but now. Oh, so you think... You think they're back? Or, or have they been here all along? I wonder if it's just like a completely new faction. Like, it could be a completely new faction, if I'm honest. It doesn't even need to be the Illuminate. It could be be anybody. I think it's the Illuminate because of the blue beams. I think the blue beams were the foreshadowing that they were coming. You know? Lono's Discord is run by automatons. We know his allegiance. That's right. (laughs) You can solo every level for sure. No, that's simply not true. Has anybody actually documented footage of them soloing the highest difficulties in Helldivers? I don't think that that's true. I don't think you would be able to do enough. I don't, maybe, maybe. My theory, my initial reaction would be you're not going to be able to call down enough stratagems by yourself to, to take care of the spawn rate on the higher difficulties. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's even remotely true that you can do, you can solo every difficulty. Uh, some problem. It's the same problem with Destiny. LFG is not for Endgame at all. Well, that's not necessarily true. There were plenty of people that have done LFG looking for group and have a completely fine time running raids and dungeons in Destiny. People have soloed the hardest difficulties. That's absolutely insane. There's a guy who stealths missions at Helldive difficulty. Oh, well, he stealths them. Do they... Okay, sneak break armor is... Oh, sneak armor is broken. Okay, but that's not what I'm talking about. I was imagining somebody going in and actually dropping stratagems and fighting. He's sneaking. He's basically stealthing it up and not... Act, is, is, is he engaged in any fights at all? Cooldowns would stop you solo. Well, it sounds like he's not doing that. It sounds like he's stealthing. That's not even remotely what I was considering. They don't spawn if you don't get in a firefight with everything that you see. So we, okay, well, that to me is impressive, okay? But that's not at all to me actually engaging with what I thought was, you know, people were doing. I was like, dude, I don't know. Your stratagems, you're not going to be able to cool them down fast enough. Stealthing, it's impressive. I'll give that guy his props. But I would imagine, do you think a lot of people are doing that? Do you think a lot of people watched his video and then were like, oh, I'm going to stealth now too? Stealth's really fun way to play, but it's a long mission. He has to fight during the mission objectives. Yeah, I was going to say, some of the mission objectives, you're going to you're gonna attract the bug's attention, and he actually pulls it off. Do you, are, that's, like, that's, that's the same question then. Do you think a lot of people are doing that? I've seen people 
playing at the highest difficulty in groups. And I'm like, that's insane. I can't imagine doing that by yourself. I mean, there's always these guys that play at crazy levels, right? They solo dungeons and raids and and they do no hit runs in every FromSoft game ever made, all in this all in order. <laughs> like like what in the world? We three man stealth ace last night. So do a oh, well, a lot of people do it. It wasn't that hard at all. Okay. You have to fight to extract. Oh, that's true as well. If you go to extract, you're going to attract the attention of the enemies. I didn't even consider that. Right. Okay. That's impressive. You don't have to sneak around everything and you can take everything out. Two of us went off to get samples. The other would stealth the objectives. Huh. That's really cool to me. What that tells me, Eugene... Uh, that actually gives me even more confidence that they could make aspirational content that is not just, well, we turn the difficulty up. There's more enemies. Like, that gives me even more confidence that, like, you can successfully stealth your way through certain aspects. You can hide during extract. There you go. See? It was a specific solo cheese for super samples. The missions, you have 12 minutes to kill all the bug holes. The evac comes in automatically. You do not have to fight to extract. Oh, have they changed that so that it works differently? It's This always, this always blows me away. People will engage with the game in such a different way than me. It's like they're playing a different game. Like, that literally sounds like a different game. Like, I boot up the game level four, maybe level five. I'm having fun. I'm laughing. I'm blowing stuff up. I'm getting samples. I'm getting medals and I'm good. And you know what I mean? I shut down and I feel satisfied. I'm like, that was a fun time guys. You know, GG's. I'll see you guys tomorrow. There are people out here freaking playing like Sam Fisher and they're solo stealthing or stealthing up the hardest difficulties or running. Like you're saying, they're running a certain mission type and they're not even fighting. They're just getting the samples and then they're just running the extract. Extract automatically comes. It usually works if one person stealths the mission and the rest of the players stay on the outside and it regulates the spawns. So you're manipulating the spawn system. That makes sense, right? It's like it doesn't it doesn't quite know where to put the enemies if you're all spread out like that. You're not funneled into one spot. <clears throat> I didn't give you crap. Who said they were giving crap? I remember Eugene giving me crap for doing that same strategy. I didn't give you crap. It's just broken. The armor is totally broken against the bots. I remember when they added the mech, I was like, yo, this thing is broken. The enemies aren't paying any attention to me. And then the patch just this week, they they fixed that. They were like, yeah, sometimes the enemies don't pay any attention to you. You know what I mean? I was like, something's wrong here, dude. They're not looking at me. It's always been that way. Extraction comes when the time runs out and it will follow you. It will follow if you're not extraction. Well, I'm sorry. Right. The the point I was making is that when you pick those 12 minute ones, you run for the samples and then extractions come in no matter what. Rather, Rather than wait for like 40 minutes. So they were probably running that for 12, getting their samples, basically getting samples every 12 minutes and not really having to shoot. That's I, I I get that. I kind of I kind of understand that. I vibe with that a little bit. I understand what people are doing. You get to the point where the currency I'm sorry, you get to the point where the samples are all that matters, you're gonna take the path of least resistance. This is where I've always felt like they need to reconsider player incentivization in hell divers. So that's a great example as to why you've got to incentivize the behavior that will get you the result or the gameplay that you're hoping for. You don't want to come down and punish players or restrict players. What you want to do is is you want to incentivize them to play differently. Now, you only really need to incentivize them to play differently if you're actually concerned about how they're playing. Now, the developer might not care at all. The solo hell diver is hurting planetary control. Shame him, he's failing missions. No, the solo hell diver is extracting, which means he's succeeding, is he not? Or is he or is he extracting and does it say you failed? It doesn't contribute to democracy. As I was just getting ready to say, if that becomes a trend and you have players playing in a way and they're not helping with the metagame, and it's not that's not what the developers want, right? Developers have, I think in their mind typically a sort of core 
sent like a, like a circle of this is kind of where we want people and how we want people playing. Well, the best way to do that is to motivate it. So like instead of saying, oh yeah, the most effective way to get samples is just to go into the hardest difficulties, pick the 12 minute missions, don't fight the enemies, grab the samples, extraction automatically comes after 12 minutes and then just get the heck out of there. Who cares about the objective? That's when the developer needs to come in and say, how can we motivate players to go for the objective when that's such an important element of the game? Well, it's very simple. You do like a sample multiplier for every single thing that you do for the objective so that if you get a handful of samples or just give an automatic sample threshold, like every single time you would achieve something on the map, they're giving you a batch of samples. So now they're motivating you with the thing that you want. It's like, hey, you want this? The most effective way for you to get lots of samples in that 12 minute period is to work on the objective. That mission requires you to kill outposts and holes, and he's not doing that if he's sneaking for samples and relying upon the auto extract. Right. I'm being consistent, Eugene. This is how I've always approached this. If they want different player behavior, you motivate it with incentive. If they want Creekers to get the frick off of Malevolent Creek and do something else with their lives, you gotta motivate it somehow. I don't know how you motivate it, because once the planet's available these guys are going to go back to Malevolent Creek and they're just, that's where they're going to stay. That's where they're going to hang out. It's, it's become part of the game. Now they've given everybody a Cape, a commemorative Cape. There's now a holiday in the game. You know, every April the third will be known as Malevolent Creek day or whatever the frick. Like it's basically player behavior is now woven into the lore of the game. And if you want people to change their behavior, the absolute best way to do it is with incentive If the developers like, we don't really like people running missions and not doing the objective and getting tons of samples, that's not how we design the game. Okay, well, instead of punishing them or being punitive, I've always said the best way to change player behavior is with incentivization, not through restriction. You can restrict the players into oblivion and then they're just going to stop playing. They're just going to stop playing if you restrict them. But if you boot up the game and you're like, yo... It is really in my interest right now. I'll give an example. Let's say for the major order, we have to go through planet A and B to get to planet C. And the developers know this because they're the ones who created the game. What you would do is you would create modifiers. And those modifiers would say, if you go to planet A, B, or C while the major order is active, you will get more medals, you will get more samples, you will get more XP, you'll get more everything. What you do is you make it feel stupid to not focus on the major order. You want the player to say, we'd be an idiot to go to Malevolent Creek right now. Look at all they're going to give to us if we go to planets A, B, and C and help with the major order. Right? Even if you increase the difficulty, it's like, well, no, the best way to get samples right now is to focus on the major order. Go to the planets where the major order is active. Turn the difficulty up. We're going to be swimming in samples. That's how you get players to change their behavior. You basically say... If we want players to funnel to the major order, if we want players to funnel to certain planets or certain objectives, you've got to motivate it. You've got to incentivize it. If not, people are just going to keep doing what they're doing. They're not going to pay any attention to it. And that's a real dilemma for this game, is that if the meta game starts to become... um, If the meta games... If the metagame becomes futile or broken or no one's doing it, I think that's bad for the game's longevity. YouTube shorts are so distracting. It wasn't until I ran into Reforge Game Short that I realized you were still live. Hey, man. Monday through Friday, we go live right now. I've been a lot better about starting right around 9.30. Like, I think today I started at, like, 9.34 or 9.35. And that was only because I couldn't get I couldn't get my internet to let me go to YouTube because I was I swapped a cable. Because whenever I'm playing games in the living room, I have to swap a cable. I need to order that 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 Wi-Fi mesh system, so I have to st- I, I wouldn't have to do that anymore. I mean, there are typically samples at the bug holes, so he's going to have to close those bug holes if he wants to get those samples, Lono. Not necessarily. If he's stealthing it up, if he's stealthing it up, he could probably sneak in and get him and get out. I don't know what he's doing. Why are people hanging out at the creek? They like the planet. It's got a cool vibe, and it also has become part of... It's like they're almost role-playing, Scotty B. 
right? Yeah, Eastern Time. 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time is typically when I go live now. I started scheduling. We're trying something a little different. I scheduled the stream somewhere between 9.01 and 9.05. So the stream is scheduled for roughly 25 to 30 minutes. And then I go live at 9.30. We're trying to be a lot better about that. And we think that that gives you ample time to get in here. It gives you the ability to rely on when I'm going to start. And I, I like we... We didn't like scheduling the stream so far in advance, but what was happening is I would schedule the stream at 925 because we wanted a shorter window of schedule, but that meant I had to come into the office at 925 and it was like disrupting my entire morning. So it helps me start on time to actually schedule the stream about 30 minutes before we go live. Creature says, because the creek is a vibe. On levels 8 and 9, there are samples everywhere. You don't need to engage the enemies. Right, like, listen to what Eugene is saying. If there if there are that many samples, why risk going to the bug hole? You don't have to. You just pick up the ones that are out in the open. You know? You don't need to go. You just walk around, you know, and just stay low. And then when 12 minutes hits, you just head to extract and get out. And you just got a bunch of samples for doing nothing. I used to always say this in games like Anthem and The Division and Destiny. I, you know, I, I pretty much always said the same thing. If you want different player behavior, motivate it. That I've, I've, my, my attitude on this has never changed. If you want different player behavior, you've got to motivate it. Because if you go restrictive and you go punitive... Two, two things will happen. The first thing that will happen is life finds a way, to quote Ian Malcolm. People will figure out a way around your restriction or they'll figure out some other grind that they're going to do, some other exploit, okay? That's the first thing that'll happen. Well, now you're going to play restriction, punitive whack-a-mole. You're just going to keep trying to smack the community. For, no, don't do that. No, don't do that. No, don't do that. That's Once you're in that exchange with the community, you're in trouble. Because the second thing is going to happen. People will stop playing. They will feel like you're some nanny state developer constantly telling them what to do. Constantly wagging your finger in their face. It won't work. It will not work. The only way you can get people to stop going over here and going over here... You have to make over here better. You do. We don't want you doing planet A. We want you to do planet B. You better make planet B awesome. It better be super rewarding. If you want people to change their behavior, you got to give them a reason to. This is a video game, by the way. They're playing for enjoyment. It's that simple. They're going to go where they get enjoyment. So what you have to do is you have to foster enjoyment somewhere else if you want them to go somewhere else. You have to foster enjoyment with doing something different if you want them doing something different. It's that simple. Heard it here first. The bots having these new big toys and gunships and us getting the mechs isn't for the Illuminate. It's because they woke up the Hive Lords. Well, I don't know about all that. Once the war ramps up, we're going to lose so many planets if people keep playing like this. I don't envy the devs' task. Right, I talked about that a little bit in the show open. Like, the idea that once there's multiple factions in the game, I'm curious how Joel's going to manage it all. Because, like, right now, we're having a hard enough time with just the the Terminids and the Automatons, you know? Eugene says, extract your samples, abandon the operation, go find another Blitz, hurting planetary control. But no one complains about those players hurting things. Well, here's the thing, Eugene. People are not rallying around that and developing an identity around that. You Creekers do that. You guys that won't leave Malevolent Creek, it's like an identity. It's like a matter of pride. Like, that's what people do. They're like, that's what I do when I play this game. Somebody finding the best way to grind samples, he's not like evangelizing people to do the same. He's not like wearing it as a badge of honor. He's quite literally doing what everybody always does. Joker Quinn with a five bomb takes us up a little bit more, a little bit further, I should say. 12 members out of 25. Every 25, I give five. And you guys are inching closer and closer to that 2,300 member goal. Thank you so much, Joker Quinn. Or the Creek. Right, like, it's not surprising. We're at 20, uh, 2,230. You're now 70 members away from the goal. And don't forget, my fives help with that. Mine are included in the total. 
the players causing negative progress. Right, but it's such a false equivalency, Eugene. Every single game, people are going to do what the sample farmer's doing. They're always going to do it. It's a constant. Every game, developers have to consider that people are going to do that. They're going to find the path of least resistance, and they're going to grind the XP, the currency, or whatever the whatever the heck it is that they want. They're going to find it, and they're going to grind it. Okay. You malevolent creek guys are not doing that. You're not. You're not taking the path of least resistance. You're not finding the fast way to a currency. You've developed a role-playing, almost identity, almost badge of honor, and you're like, no, this is how we play. This is where we go. And I'm not scolding you for it. I'm saying these two are not the same. They're not. One is attempting to create a vibe in the game and an identity and wants other people to do it, and it calls on other people to do it. The guy farming samples is certainly not helping with democracy, but he's not out here parading around telling other people to play that way. He's not saying, yeah, everybody should do what I'm doing. There aren't calls to farming samples and abandoning missions. You creakers are weird, man. You guys are weird. Reforge, catching up on two times speed. Soloing on higher difficulties is definitely possible even in combat. Not engaging with every mob is a crucial strat in the endgame. We found something we enjoyed and we did it. Same as the sneak samplers. Right, but I think there's a, there's a qualitative difference between a sneak sampler and a creaker. The guy sneaking for samples isn't like, oh, I love this, this is so fun. He's like, this is the fastest way to get the samples. The motivations are completely different. And I'm not telling either player to play differently. I'm just saying they're completely different. They're not the same at all. Also, I guarantee you there are way more people in a 24-hour period being like, I'm a malevolent creek guy than there are people that are like, I'm going to go into high-level content and sneak around for samples. Because even that's going to get old really quickly. And also, eventually... They have all they need. Eventually, they're at the sample cap, and they're going to stop. They're not just going to keep doing it. Uh, again, you malevolent creek guys, you just don't stop. The only thing that stops you from going to the planet is when the dadgum planet can't be landed on. Thank God for that. We've been talking about how, oh, they should let us land on planets even after they've been liberated. You guys would never leave. That's all you would do. I don't think anyone should be worried about what others are doing. They should only be worried about what the devs are doing. I think that's too dichotomous. It's literally a game where we call on each other to fight for democracy and we band together. We can see the number of players on a planet. We can see the percentage of the planet being liberated or defended. I think that that's absurd to say that you're, you don't think play, players should care what other people are doing. To take a game with a meta game and a galactic war and a galactic war table and player tabs on who's playing where and, and information about how fast we're taking planets and to be like, you should only care about your experience in the devs. That doesn't make any sense at all. I'm just going to find another planet I enjoy to play on. I mean, I th- that's fine. You can literally play however you want, but it feels like you're actively trying to thumb your nose at the game and then expecting other people to leave you alone. Like, don't talk to me. Don't tell me not to do what I'm doing. But you're thumbing your nose at the, at, the, at the literal thing. Like, imagine when there were ARGs in Destiny, and they were like, hey, we need everybody to do public events on this planet. And you're like, I hate that planet. I'm not going to play. And if people were like, come on, man. You can't for a couple of days help out with this. You're like, don't tell me what to do. You leave me alone. Bleh. Yeah, come on. What the heck? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're thumbing your nose at the design of the game. The game was designed for people to get together and work on a collective effort. And you're like, don't worry about what I'm doing. The the identity of the game is quite literally to worry about what the other guy is doing. Like, fighting for democracy. Is he treasonous? Report him to the democracy officer. Like, it's part of the game's identity. I didn't participate in those either. Oh, I'm shocked. I'm so shocked that that's what you did back then, too. That's not surprising at all, you creaker. People who want others to fight for the creek are way more RP-focused than actually wanting everybody to join the creek fight. Before the creek made your order, there was usually uh, a couple thousand, only a couple thousand on the creek. I know, I know. It's, it's, It's largely overstated. 
I am of the I I firmly believe that no one is doing anything wrong. It's a matter of the developers funneling and changing player behavior with incentive. That's the issue. That will always be the issue in ty- in games like this. Lono, this is treasonous rhetoric. The creek is a foothold of democracy. You've been reported to the Ministry of Truth. Thank you for the five spot, QBZ. Creaker, we have slurs for these people now. We do. <laughs> Creakers, man. Who wants to say malevolent every single freaking time? <laughs> Listen, I actually like the fact that the Creakers have affected the game. There is now a holiday and a cape in the game because of the people who wouldn't leave Malevolent Creek. Right? I think that that's cool. I really, really do. I think that's awesome. That's got to feel pretty dope to be one of the guys that was like, no, bro, we can't leave the creek. We got to stay here. We got to hold the line. And for them to commemorate that, I think is cool. I think that's cool. I'll be honest with you. I would rather have people ignoring the major order because they're having fun kind of role playing or they're having fun on their favorite planet. I would much rather have people doing that than the gremlin who like won't play the game. He just goes in, gets samples, leaves, goes in, gets samples, leaves, right? I would much rather have people role-playing and kind of vibing with a certain planet than the people that play the game like a gremlin. Do you see what I'm saying? And here's why. I actually think the Creakers are more likely to get in line with the game and to go to other places if they're properly motivated, and the gremlins are just going to gremlin. That's just what they're going to do. They're going to optimize the fun out of the game. They're not going to give a frick about the objectives or the major orders. They're just there to grind. They're there to see the number go up. They're there to check the box. They're going to squeeze this game dry, and then they're going to walk away like a rag they're just gonna wring it out and throw it over their shoulder like you're not gonna change that guy's behavior generally you're not like i know i say oh well you could put more samples or you could do this you could do that listen to a certain extent that's a moving target they're gonna keep doing what they're doing they're gonna find a faster way they're gonna do something else they're gonna find some exploit that's just what they're gonna do i would much rather have a game full of creakers because I think they're at least engaging with some aspect of the spirit of the game's identity and the gremlin isn't the gremlin isn't the gremlin has turned the game into a mechanical exercise he's not engaging with the game the the identity or the spirit of the game like at all at least the creakers are doing that Parasito says, what I genuinely don't understand is why people would rather sit there and have their time literally mean nothing for the general gameplay instead of actually participating in liberating and defending. Um, here's why, Paris. I think people get to a certain point where they don't need, they don't need the medals from the major or, well, this is part of the problem, Paris. And we can talk about this. They're going to get the major orders medals no matter what. Like, the major order is going to succeed or fail. And in their mind, they're going to get the medals or they're not going to get the medals the same either way. If they spend an entire week on the creek, they're going to get they're going to get medals for the successful major orders and they're not going to get medals when the major order fails. For them, it's the same. Nothing has changed. And I personally think I personally think that the major order could have bonus medals for tiers of engagement. Let's say that there is a major order that's going to reward 30 medals. And people turn their nose up to that and they're like, 30 medals, I'm good. I can get that in a play session just running missions on Malevolent Creek. Right? You're going to, in two days, you're going to give me 30 medals? Yeah, pff, okay. I can get that in a play session, bro. Like, that's going to be their attitude. Okay. So here's what you do. If you want people attacking planets A, B, and C, you have a multiplier. The more they engage with each planet, the more that multiplier goes up. So they don't get 30 medals. They get 60 medals. They get 90 medals. Right? You Creakers are going to think a lot differently about these major orders if your buddies are like dude 
We grinded it out. I helped with every single planet. I just walked away with over 100 medals. You can be like, say what now? Oh, yeah, and they also have sample bonuses. I got a bunch of samples, too. You said, well, I said, what, well, huh? You got what now? That's going to change people's minds. They're going to be like, well, I'll, I'm going to play the major order then. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that multiplier up, dude. That's a lot of metals. That's a lot of currency. That's a lot of samples. Now, obviously, there are going to be people who don't need any of that, but they're the minority. There is an it, overwhelming majority of this player base does not have all the war bonds completed. The vast majority of this game does not have all three war bonds completed. They don't have every single stratagem. They don't have every single um, uh, currency unlock for their ships. They would be motivated by something like that. If you want players funneling into the major orders, give them a reason to do it. Give people a reason to say... Well, yes, if you just sit out, you get the medals anyway. You just got to make sure and log in. You want them to say, oh, that's stupid. No, man, if you help with the major order, it's extremely good. And the great thing about that is, let's say you've got to liberate planets A, B, and C, and they miss out on the a, on planet A. It gets taken so fast that they miss out. Well, that's healthy FOMO. That is healthy FOMO. They're like, I missed out on the opportunity to get the multiplier from planet A on my major order. I better help out with planet B and C, and they're going to dive in. They're going to make time, you know? They're going to neglect their family for the sake of democracy. These are the types of ideas that I think are necessary, because if not, I do think what you're going to run into is a growing sense of, like, contention with not enough people are helping with the major order. I just spent a couple of days working on that major order and it failed. Well, is that person going to be less likely or more likely to help with, help with the next major order? See, what's going to happen is, now track with me here. If your major order offers 30 to 50 medals over the course of a, of a major order that takes two to three days, somebody's eventually going to crunch those numbers and do that math and say, I can get that amount of medals in, in, in one or two play sessions and just ignore the major order. I'm out here trying to do the major order and we fail anyway. You don't want that to happen. You don't want the metagame or the metagame motivation or the, the idea of the players engaging with the metagame. You don't want people to abandon that. That's, that's, that's part and parcel to the game's succeed, ongoing success. Fuzzy says, you need to give these players a pop-up saying they're under investigation for not helping with the major order and that they will miss out on the rewards. Eugene says, I still think the orders are rigged. For me, Lono, at launch, my buddy and I earned our scars and bars on the creek without any optimized gear. After a while, we were able to adapt and conquer uh, automaton space beyond the creek. Right, and I love that people play that way. I do. I think it's great that you're playing that way. You just can't get upset when people call you out for not helping because you're not helping. You can't voluntarily say, I don't want to help. I'm not interested in helping. And then be like, I can't believe people are upset at me for not helping. Like if everybody's moving really heavy boxes onto a moving truck and you're dusting with the feather duster, People are going to be like, what are you doing? That doesn't need to be done right now. And you'll be like, hey, leave me alone. I just really like feather dusting. I can't believe y'all are coming at me like this. Everyone would be like, what are you talking about? We all came over here to help Dave move. You're not helping. Like, you can't voluntarily decide not to help and then be like, I can't believe people are upset that I'm not helping. Like, come on come on you can't wear it on your sleeve that you're not helping and then be like i don't understand what everybody's problem is like you know come on play the game if you're gonna role play and you're gonna be a creaker then be a creaker defend yourself be like no this is necessary this is there's a sense of duty and honor don't just be like yeah you gotta tell me how to play <laughs> I would never leave my enjoyment of my free gaming time to community to a community. For sure, for sure, which is exactly why the only way to change your behavior is with incentive. The only way to get you to do the thing that everybody else is doing or the things that the dev wants you to do is with incentive. You're not going to change your behavior otherwise. You're going to look at the major order, you're going to see the 30 medals, you're going to scoff and say, "Yeah, I'm good. I'll either get them or I won't." 
Like, I think you should have to help with the major order to get the medals. I think getting medals from a major order and you didn't help and all you did was log in. No, you shouldn't get them. You shouldn't. It should literally pop up and say, major order completed. However, your treasonous and unhelpful behavior has warranted you to be fined the exact number of medals that you've just been awarded. (laughs) Like, you don't have to be that extreme, right? You don't want to go too punitive and upset people. But the game should definitely be like, hey, we completed the major order. You didn't help. So you don't get any medals. Or you get less. You know? Maybe instead of my multiplier idea, maybe there's like five tier levels of engagement. And the more you engage with the major order, the more medals you get. So the people that just log in get like a single medal. It's like, yeah, here you go. You managed to log in. Congratulations. Good job. You pushed a button on a controller. Here's a medal for doing that. Right. And like, oh, you helped X amount of times. You ran X number of missions. 10 medals. X number of missions. 25 medals. X number of missions. 50 medals like whatever number of missions they want you know that you run helping with the major order you get medals accordingly I was under the assumption that was the only way to get them I just found out I don't have to do anything but log in that's right you don't have to help at all and I think that that's backwards 15 medals a day for personal orders makes helping the major order less rewarding right bam yeah like you have to have it scale up to where if you really commit and help with the major order, you can walk away with like 100 medals. They, they need to really increase it. Because if not, people are going to crunch the numbers and say, if I do the daily personal order and you just get medals from running missions anyway, you're like, 30 to 50 medals is nothing. That's nothing. That's a play session for some people. Is additive incentive the only way to change behavior? Not mechanics that increase difficulty or reduce current rates, currency rates for people being on planets with positive liberation rates. Um, that is a way. That's negative reinforcement, Paris. I think you want to wait to do that. That needs to be like the final ripcord of like, okay, people aren't responding. Let's give a little bit of negative reinforcement. I think positive reinforcement a better is a better approach. You're always going to have a percentage of the player pool that just ignores that ignores all your positive reinforcement and all your incentives, and they just play however the heck they want. And I think that's totally fine. I think you're better off leaving those people alone. I don't think you... Like, let's say, for example, as a thought experiment, Parasito, that they use some of my ideas and they do positive reinforcement on the major orders where the more you engage with it, the more you get. And so you can get like 100 medals or something if you really, if you really dedicate your time. Okay, and they notice that it actually has a positive effect. There's a certain number of players that start, there's a magnetism to the major orders, and like, thumbs up, we got the result we want. But if they crunch the numbers and they're like, yeah, there's still about 10% of the active daily logins that are completely ignoring the major order, I don't think you want to punish those people. Well, yeah, the planet you go to now is harder. Yeah, the planet you go to now, you get less rewards. I think it's more important to just keep those people in the game. Does that make sense? Major order capes and titles as a reward. I think that would work too, John. But again, there has to be something intrinsic to you have to help with the major order. If you want the reward, you gotta help. You know, because like Eugene is saying, my leisure time is my leisure time. Like he's like, it's a game, it's not a job. Sure, sure. Which is why you would say, you didn't help with the major order. You don't get any of the stuff. Like, I think that's fair. You getting the reward for a major order you didn't help on at all, I think is stupid. I think that's one of the things they need to work on. Negative reinforcement's often met with negative behavior. Yeah, I don't think negative reinforcement... You literally only pull that ripcord if it's for the sake of other players. Like, you only do negative reinforcement for behavior that's harmful to other players' experiences. You know, toxic kicking, toxic communication, you know, team killing on purpose, you know, like over and over again. Like, it's one thing to play a joke on your friend. It's another thing to kill somebody 17 times in a row because you think it's funny. Like, that's when you have to do negative reinforcement, when someone's behavior is actively harming the experience of another player. 
negative reinforcement equals F your game. Right, like I think that's why you don't want to pull that trigger because that's the attitude a lot of people would take. They would say, I'm out of here then. I'm not playing your game. I agree that positive reinforcement should be first on the list, but there should be a backup that really hurts if you get hit with it because you're being stubborn. Again, it's a numbers game, Parasito. If there are people logging into Helldivers 2 every single day, and they are not doing the major order, no matter what you try, no matter how much positive reinforcement, there still remains this this weird bastion of players that they play every single day, but they never help with the major order. You got to be real careful with those players because I think they're important. I think they're important. You got to be very careful. You don't want those players to stop playing. They are probably just as likely, if not more likely, to spend money. They are probably just as likely, if not more likely, to play long term. They are probably just as likely, if not more likely, to tell their friends about the game. You know? You gotta stop subtweeting Trill like that. And subtweet nobody. I love Lono's idea of having exponential rewards for helping with the major order. It wouldn't take a, I wouldn't take away medals if people didn't do it, but if you do the major order, you get more and more. ETP, I think you just give a login amount. Like, oh yeah, you happen to log in during the major order. Here's five medals. Congratulations. Like, you were actually in the game. Good for you. As soon as you help, you get more. You get like 20. And then it just keeps going up from there. So the most the most ardent supporter of the major order walks away with like 100 medals or something like that. The difficulty with a sandbox as Nova Hands is that some people just want to dig in and play their own little way. Each player brings a unique set of expectations and desires. The developer has to push a little. Yeah, a little, I think, yes. If X percentage aren't participating in the major order, then the major order needs to be adjusted to account for those people. It's a dev issue. No one else is. Right, and if the devs attempt it, Eugene, and the line doesn't move, they might have to consider other methods. But it's delicate. Because, you know, Creakers are hell divers too. They're a weird, you know, and they don't make a whole lot of sense to me. But they're part of the fabric of the game now. You can't pull that thread out any. It's done. That's something that's really cool about hell divers too, if you think about it. The behavior of malevolent Creek players their behavior is now woven into the fabric of the game you can't you can't un, undo that it's there it's part of the history of the game now it is you can't undo it there's a cape there's a holiday there's memes that's something that's very cool about hell divers is it's a living breathing game and this has happened there's no going back the only way forward is to think about giving good reason for a player to play differently and if then they so choose to play differently it was their choice and they feel rewarded for that choice you never want somebody playing differently like begrudgingly like well fine I guess I'll stop doing this because they made it terrible well now they're in a bad mood they're more begrudging of the decision I don't think they're I don't think that's a good way for a player's mindset you want them to feel like they willingly chose the new style of play or the new activity. I always said this in Destiny. I always said this. So one of the biggest mistakes they always made was welcome to the new content. Go grind old content. Like that's the one of the worst things to do because what you do is, is you put the player in a state of begrudging acquiescence. It's like, well, pfft, Fine. I was really excited about all those new guns I saw and all those new activities I saw, but I guess I'll just wait to do it. I'll go over here and run strikes. So, th- th- and I, I don't know what the state of that game is, but at the time when I played it, that was always a reoccurring criticism of the seasonal format in Destiny 2 was that players were doing something begrudgingly it was like I wouldn't choose to do this on my own I'm only doing it because it's a requirement of your content flow which is why morale I think started to dip and lower because you never truly felt like you were able to go in to the new content you were given like a homework assignment first 
you know imagine if when you show up to an amusement park you're like oh sweet i can't wait to go ride these roller coasters and they're like up 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 like come here um we need to do this scavenger hunt first i don't want to do a scavenger hunt well in order to get the tickets to get on that ride you need to go do a scavenger hunt first that you would be like are you freaking kidding me like you wouldn't want to do that now you would do it begrudgingly because if the desire to ride the roller coaster is strong enough you would jump through their hoops but your attitude the entire time would not be very good you'd be like stupid yep there's the fountain with the elephant check like you wouldn't feel as if you were actively choosing and you wouldn't feel like you were the arbiter of your fun you would almost feel like you're not in charge it's much better now but old content is needed still but not leveling and not right away I never had a problem with old content being interwoven with seasonal content in destiny it needed to be more of a cadence and not like this giant front starter of you gotta run strikes for a couple days like either what the huh what did you just say you know I don't mind if on day two or three in the season you're like hey we're, we're gonna we're gonna weave see you know we're gonna weave seasonal content and established content together that's fine they always did it terribly they always front loaded the season with crap that nobody wanted to do how do you feel about the current balance ideology says elite spartan in my opinion they seem to nerf the strong weapons hard and buff others to replace them seems like they could have a softer touch okay i don't have any strong opinions about the weapon that they supposedly ruined but i'll tell you what i know about weapon metas from five years of destiny coverage a couple of years of borderlands coverage and pretty good pretty good amount of coverage of anthem and division so i've i've got i've got i've got a decent amount of experience here in playing these games thinking about these games watching the community respond to nerfs when the subject of nerfs and buffs comes up you have to remember that there are constants and there are variables which the constants in the equation is going to be that there will always be a really strong weapon or in a really strong build and the variable is that there will always be a really strong gun and a really strong build it, it no, it's always moving it's always moving uh, creature gave me an analogy the other day that like you know youtube you can have your highs and lows on youtube you know don't get discouraged he's like it's like a ferris wheel you know when it's your turn to be way up top and you got this great viewpoint enjoy it you know you'll start to tick down and then have to kind of wait your turn again that's a weapon meta if you can't accept that you're you're going to be frustrated every couple of weeks you're going to waste emotional energy being frustrated you know imagine being on the ferris wheel and being like you know you're on the ferris wheel and you're like this is great look at this view and as it starts to go down you're like oh come on why did you leave me up there this is stupid and then it comes back around and you're up top you're like this is great you your expectations are not in line with what a ferris wheel is going to do you have to align your expectations with what a game like this is going to do it's a constant and it's a variable there will always be a really strong weapon and a really strong build and that's also a variable because it'll only last for a while what do you think is preferable the strongest weapon and the strongest build being left alone for months and it becomes this rote boring exercise of always picking the same guns always picking the same stratagems dropping on a planet and going through the rehearsed motions I think like the second or third week the game was out, I knew what guns I was going to pick and I knew what stratagems I was going to pick and I thought, hmm, this is getting kind of predictable. It didn't bother me, but I thought, okay, that's a danger. And then they shook it up. And all of a sudden, I'm using something different. I never would have thought to take a Punisher into into the game. Shot too slow. Took it, took it onto a mission against the automatons and I said, this thing is really nice against the automatons. I never would have thought to use a recoilless rifle. They buffed it. I thought, let me try it out. Had a blast with it. I never would have thought for, hey, everybody should be 
equipping the one-time use rocket the EAT and then they're all over the place and we're picking them up and we're blowing the armor off of you know chargers that wouldn't have happened that wouldn't have happened if they were not buffing and nerfing things you, you, if you don't accept that that's going to be the reality of the game every couple of weeks you're going to waste time typing an angry rant or yelling into your microphone or going to Twitter you're wasting your energy it's going to happen it would be like going to an amusement park and raging out every time you had to stand in line you're an idiot that's part of the experience you know going into the experience that you're going to stand in line getting angry about it is dumb it's a sign of immaturity what the heck are you doing we're all we, we all know this is what we're going to do bro we're going to come to the amusement park and we're going to stand in line if you're playing a live service game with guns and builds and abilities it will never stay static that quasar cannon enjoy it while it lasts it will get nerfed eventually Have fun with it. Have fun with it knowing that it won't stay the best. That's part of the fun. You're like, this is really fun. I know this isn't going to last, but this is so fun. Then eventually it gets nerfed and you put it down and you use something else. If you can't get your brain to lock into gear with that, that's what you're going to do every time. You're just going to get angry. That should be an interesting bit of specific research. In an MMO or live service style game, what's the longest single meta that was ever dominant? A build that held the champ belt for the longest. Right, and does it promote engagement or does it promote the opposite? Does it promote boredom, familiarity, and disengagement? You need to learn to recognize when something is out of band and it's about to get nerfed. I don't even know if it's always about being out of band. Sometimes, Eugene, I think they buff something above the sun line on purpose. Everything everything gets its Icarus moment. Right? They let it get too close to the sun. Everybody laughs and enjoys the chaos for a while. And then the wings melt and they say, all right, crash that thing back down to the earth. I think it's part of the, I think it's part of the fun. Yo, did you see that clip? They just buffed that weapon. Oh my gosh. It's so strong now. And everybody goes, Voomp, and there's this heat map on this one weapon and everybody's using it. And then, the, and then the, you know, the devs come out and go, oh, I get we. We accidentally overbuffed it. No, you didn't. It's on purpose. This is a team that understands the psychology of live service. I've always said, you can't purely have technical reasons for people to come back and play your live service game. You have to have psychological reasons. And that's one of the ways you keep people playing is you give them a little pinprick. No, your build's not as good anymore. You're going to have to change things up. What? This is stupid. They try out the new weapon. This is awesome. Like, that's part of how a game like this keeps going. I used the Dominator for weeks when people said it was crap. I enjoyed it because it had utility and now it's a monster. At some point, it'll probably be nerfed back. Right. After the buff, you got to learn to recognize it's broken or whatever and enjoy it while it lasts. Right. Yeah, enjoy the Quasar Cannon. It's so fun. I was taking down dropships with it. I was taking down dropships actively kind of knowing, yeah, this prob- this probably won't last. They'll nerf this. They'll nerf this. It has no ammo economy. It you A weapon that is that incredibly strong, having like zero ammo economy, you just wait and do it again. <laughs> You're kidding yourself if you think they're going to leave that alone. goats in overwatch was one of the the longest broken metas i think in games like that it is a little bit different though because having a meta like that creates an expectation of balance like because you have the heroes the counters you know what i'm saying you every everybody kind of interlocks i think there's something to be said about that you know i think there's something to be said about that I think it is a little bit different in a game like Overwatch than a game like this where you have a giant weapon pool and stratagems. I think it's very different. The gunships are almost worse than the dropships, but they go down with one EAT. The EAT is so fun. I think it's such a fun element to the game. It really is. Goats was a nightmare. 
Why was Goats and not? Well, I don't want to get on that subject. I don't want to talk about Overwatch. I give zero, zero care about that game. I barely played it. We played it for a couple of weeks way back in the day, had fun with it, and then it got sweaty and I walked away. Like every PvP game in existence, those of us that don't really care enjoy the first two weeks where it's not sweaty and then it gets sweaty and it, I walk away every time. It's like, I'm not trying to qualify, dude. I'm just trying to laugh. Enjoy it while it lasts is a much more positive way to think about it. You're playing the game as it is now. And that won't be possible in a few days or weeks or months. Some days, the game will be done. Th- that's such a good way of putting it, there. Because like, think about it like this. Do you guys remember the era of the Galahorn? Do you remember the era of the Ikalos shotgun? Of course you do. Of course you do. Why? Because those were eras. Would you remember those eras if they never ended? Would you remember those eras if they were always like that? Would you remember the era of the breaker shotgun and Helldivers? Would you remember the era of the breaker shotgun, the personal shield, and the railgun? Would you remember that era if it never ended? No. There would be nothing to look back on and remember. It would be this static, ever-present thing that you could always use. There would be no... Were you there during that era? It was dope, bro. That's why games like this work. You, you cannot just have this perpetual meta. It, it, you're not creating memories. You aren't. There's got to be a shift. There's got to be a move every once in a while within what people are doing. Yeah, those were Destiny 2 weapons and Destiny 1 weapons. Rachel says, I'm like the only person who can't get into Helldivers. I'm glad everyone else does. I honestly think, Rachel, if we were still doing those streams where we all played together, and if it was like me, you, and ADJC, and Hilly, I think you'd love it. I think that's the vibe of of a game like this kind of hooking you. Just knowing you and your personality, I think you would need that. Like, if you just sit down and play with some people, or just matchmake, I, I don't think it's going to hook you. Just knowing your personality. Knowing your humor... In the, like, the way that you play games like this, like you would, if we still had a, a place for us to do that, which I do, I wish we did. Like I miss playing games with folks like you and ADJC. I miss Hilly a whole lot, but I think that would create inroads for you to enjoy a game like this because that's that's part of what is making so many of us come back. It's just those stupid, funny moments of blowing each other up or getting crushed by something. You'd be bored out of your mind if the meta was mag dumping rapid fire shotguns or mag dumping, you know, the grenade launchers. Remember the grenade launcher era? It was so funny, but eventually it's got to go. Everybody's standing in the well and all you hear is this. Thum, 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 thum. Like that's all it was. And then the boss's health meter just goes, me. Like, okay. That's fair and probably right. Yeah. It also might help if there were, you know, Hot women in the game. I know, I know that really helps you with Mass Effect. So you know, just those kind of in. Inro- <laughs> like you'll probably have a blast with Stellar Blade. <laughs> Shuro Chi with six stack Icolos. That's right, dude. Shuro Chi with the Icolos, bro. It sounds like we're talking another language right now to non Destiny people. They're like, what the frick are they talking about? Shuro Chi. Oh my gosh. What I, what I always found remarkable about Destiny little reminiscence here was their ability to make something seem insurmountable and then as it became familiar it was silly I always thought that was interesting like the evolution of the content like the first time you saw Riven the first time you engage with Riven in game or IRL the, the first time you see Riven the first time you engage with some of those encounters you're like what the frick man and then like a week later, you're like, go, stand, three, two, everybody off. All right, next phase. Like, I always thought that was very interesting. Like, they were really good with the psychological influence of the environments, the lighting, the bosses, the size of the bosses. Their ability to affect the psyche of the player in the first exposure is actually impressive. If, if you think about it, the first time Oryx comes up, you know? The first time, the first time any of those bosses come out, it's like your the psychological impact is what the frick are we gonna do? This is insane. 
that's I think where some of the magic has gone away is we're so familiar with the game now that impact probably happens less now like day one of a raid no one's having that moment they're just like all right what do we got to do okay go there okay push this stand here what's that do okay how long do we got to stand there you know okay how much damage did we get you know what i'm saying like i wonder if the familiarity has chipped away at their ability to do that you know you ever feel that way about zero hour strike to get the outbreak perfected yeah do you guys remember that we almost didn't pull that off. We had to two-man it. Do you remember? Was it Wicked Bob that got lost? I think it was Wicked Bob. I think he still follows me on Twitter. Wicked Bob got lost, and me, I forget who it was. Who was the other person? We had to two-man that. It was intense. That was a great experience. That was a great experience. Because we almost didn't pull it off. <clears throat> we almost didn't pull it off. That was really, really cool. First time I saw it works, I was shook. Mm -hmm. Nothing going to feel like OG Vault of Glass. I remember going through Vault of Glass with only one guy knew how to do it, and I hated it. I absolutely hated it because it was so stupid. Like, we didn't know what we were doing. So I was like, stand here, do this, stand here. And that was when you could go out on the ledge during the one during the one uh, fight. You could go out on the ledge and hide. You were yelling at Bob. <clears throat> I remember laughing at him, being like, dude, where are you? I remember I remember thinking it was funny, but maybe not. I don't know. It's hard. My memory my memory of those days is a little clouded. I remember that stream that was fun to watch. I wish I could remember who who was with me. It was one of the younger guys, wasn't it? Was it Ripsh? The guy I yelled at when he got boots? Like I was a joke. I was like, Ripsh! I think it was one of those younger guys because they were always clutch. Those younger guys were always so good at the game. You know, they're like teen... They, well, they're not teenagers anymore, but at the time they were teenagers and they were always clutch. They were always really good players. I think... I want to say it was Ripsh or one of those guys. I don't think it was Harry. But I can't remember now. All that content is just about figuring out rhythms and timings. That's why it feels so overwhelming at first and so easy later. You don't need a cheeked up Korean model. We have cheeks in this game. Or is this doctored up raid? Or is it a doctored up raid you already did in D1? (laughs) That's true. That's true. That's true. There certainly is elements of that. Like, I'm not paying attention to the game, but I saw a tweet. And to me, it's so crystal clear. They're getting ready to enter their sort of age of triumph. Um... The Age of Triumph, where they're going to use all of their best pieces of content and all of the nostalgia to give you the golden era of the game, which means they're pulling up anchor, man. Ship's going out, going out to sea. They're going to let it. They're going to let it coast. That's what I. That that's that's what I sense in the and feel it in the ether. You know, it's like this is this is D 2s Age of Triumph. The bo- a, a raid boss rush? That sounds awesome. I put many hours in D1, three characters with a thousand hours plus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was in similar similar threshold. Well, actually, I was higher than that, I think. Yeah, Wrath was the best raid. The biggest problem with Wrath was I still to this day think that the siege tank or whatever it was called, the siege engine, I still feel like it should have fell in the water and gotten grabbed by SIVA, and we should have had to go in and fight it. It should have been a stationary boss with mechanics. Um, I think that's what they should have done. If Wrath would have had one more boss, even if it would have been the Siege Engine, a SIVA-infected Siege Engine, it would be the perfect raid. Even now, to this day, not playing all the raids, I would still maintain that. I would still maintain that that is the, that is the perfect raid, if they could have done that. They didn't do that. That's the one flaw in Wrath, is it just doesn't have... It's, it's, it's one encounter too short. It just needed one more encounter. Great raid. Such a good raid. As soon as they said they were getting a raid boss gauntlets to grind for raid exotics, that tells me they're definitely going to EOL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the Age of Triumph era. They're ushering in the golden age of Destiny 2. And 
I think it's the right time to do it. Game's been to usher that in in its around its 10 year anniversary. That's the right time, dude. It's time. It's time. You can't recapture the magic once that happens, right? You can't undo a sunset, man. And I don't mean sunsetting in the game. I mean, literally, once the light fades, that's it. I don't think it comes back. I don't think you can get that that community to to reinvigorate itself. Even big-time streamers are not reacting all that strongly. They're like, oh, it's nice. You know, it just is gone. And I think that that's fine. I think that's part of the journey. Part of the journey in a game like that is to say there was magic and the magic is gone. That makes the memories and the times more special. Like the fact that it hit a fever pitch or the fact that there was moments where it felt like there was lightning captured in a bottle. I mean, I personally think they hit the bottle with a sledgehammer intentionally and some of it's deserved. But at the same time, it makes those moments better to look back and say there was ma- there was there were magic times or magical times that were really, really great, great moments and they stand out stronger because that's now faded if that makes sense it's like it's kind of like what happened with the marvel movies it's like what's like with anything right it hits its peak it hits its height and that peak and that climax and that height makes it apparent that you're not going back to that you just aren't which is that's okay It ended for me when Eververse became a thing. So D2 ended for you when it launched? I don't understand that sentence. That's kind of a weird one to me. Guys, in about 10 minutes, we're going to do a a members-only chat, AMA. We'll keep the stream going. We'll do a members-only chat. I do have an upload today about Silk Song. Uh, We'll head over to that. We have not yet hit the goal of 25 members. You guys are really close to the goal for the week of 2,300 members. We are at 2,230. So we're about 70 members away from the goal. If you hit that today, you lock in that incentive, uh, which is a really good idea given how things have been going lately. Lock in those goals when you can. Uh, Next week, the goal will be a little bit higher, but 2300 is well, well within reach right now. Yeah, I mean, Eververse was in D1. I'm not quite sure. Destiny 2 is pretty much toast once this upcoming expansion's out. Bungie's poor leadership project management ruined the magic of the game. Now they're just trend chasing. They're just a trend chasing developer. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, at some at some level, yeah. Eververse was and still is one of the best microtransaction systems. Yeah, I'll always maintain that. I'll always maintain that that Bungie leadership's terrible and toxic, and they've done terrible things to people like me and others. But their microtransaction approach is one of the best in the industry. It's one of the best in the industry. 80% is earnable. They tell you what's not earnable. They provide you with currency in the game to buy things in their in their microtransaction store. Um, I, <laughs> there's no RNG. Direct purchase. All things that the community asked for. The thing that always irritated me about that, it would be like going to a restaurant and saying... I really, really don't like this menu item that you have. I'm going to order it differently. I would like it to come out this way. And they bring it out to you in exactly that way. And you're like, what the frick is this? Like, that's what they did. Everything that the community asked for, they gave. Get rid of RNG. Done. Let us direct purchase. Done. Let us know what's not earnable and what is earnable. Done. Oh, we've also increased the amount of items that are earnable and decreased the amount of items that are purchase only. I don't know, man. That one always confused me. I think that was probably the most tiring debate with the Destiny community was the one about the Eververse because it was just so ill-informed and inaccurate. It was like literally everything the community asked for, they gave us. It was like we got to curate and dictate exactly how microtransactions took place in that game. I still have hopes for this game to inspire some raid-like content that they actually take note from Exoprimal. You would drop in, play a normal 5v5 PvP, and before you could do much of anything, it would change to a 10vE raid with a boss with mechanics and just the level of excitement I haven't seen since. Well, 
I don't necessarily know like what hell divers could do with like raid or dungeon like content, but I certainly think they should be open to it. <laughs> I don't I don't think that you just do like raise the difficulty and that's the extent. They're like, "Yep, that's what we've got. That's what we do with our content in hell divers. We just raise the difficulty." I think they've got enough to work with to do mechanic mechanic based content that is challenging, you know. Eugene has 102,000 bright dust. What a scummy microtransaction system. Yeah. Guys, by the way, if you've enjoyed today's show, if you've enjoyed today's show, smash that like button. We could easily have 300 likes by now. There's been tons of people here this morning, uh, and we are going to have uh, um, a Silk Song upload. Just kind of me theorizing what's going on with that game. And uh, we are currently working on the the member goal, as well as make sure you hit subscribe. Subscribing is totally free, by the way, if you hit subscribe, and that gets you into uh, the chat if you want to talk. In a little bit, you'll need to be a member to talk, which is a great reason to be here as often as you can. Uh, you might get those gifted members. That is always really, really helpful. Um, so thank you so much for being here. I don't know, D2 just wasn't for me. I thought D1 was way better. Yeah, that's totally fine. I, it, there were a lot of people that felt that way. They felt like D1 went out on a high note, and they feel like D2 never picked the ball back up. There were a lot of people that felt that way. It was really, really hard to compete with how good Destiny felt at the end. Um, it was really, really hard to compete with that. You know? Oh, cool. The short that we pushed out says members preview on it. I like that. I like that. Didn't didn't do as the other one got like seven hundred views. I wonder how they're doing that. I wonder what dictates whether or not it gets shoved uh, in front of members. We've been doing that now, guys. If you're a member, you should be getting a members only short um, in your feed every day, telling you like what's coming the next day, what all we have planned for the week, stuff like that. Trying to get a god roll on the Blast Furnace uh, or Izanagi and the Black Armory killed me. There's always this weird... I always called it a breaking point, like a rubber band that you could only stretch so far. And I always talked about that with drop rates. And... um, My contention was always that generosity is not the killer of engagement. It's the promoter of it. That was like one of my sayings that I would say back then. Um, And the, the reasoning behind that was always very simple. Like people would wrongly sort of conclude that if the game is generous and empowers you to get the things that you want people are going to get bored and stop playing. And I always said, it's actually the exact opposite of that. If I know I can go into this encounter and every single time the gun drops and I'm just waiting for the perfect roll, I'm going to grind that until I get the perfect roll. And then, because I feel empowered by that generosity, I'm going to go into other encounters and other engagements and other pieces of content and I'm going to do the same thing. Because I feel as if the game itself, there is the, there's an essence of generosity sort of emanating throughout the game. And now activities and loot pursuits that I typically might have ignored suddenly become more appealing because it's like, well, I know I can go into this encounter and try and get a good pair of this or a good pair of that or this good thing to drop. So I'm going to try to do that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's always going to be the case. Like, generosity doesn't kill engagement. It doesn't. It promotes it. Because what it does is it tells the player, it's worth it for you to be in this game. It's worth it for you to grind this game. Like, this is really relevant to Helldivers and what we were talking about earlier with, like, if you want people to change their behavior, if you want people to do something differently or go into a major order, okay? That's precisely what you have to do. You have to make it rewarding. 
you want a player to say, oh, this this game is going to give me XYZ for my time. I'm going to keep engaging. I'm going to go do that thing. I'm going to do the major order. This is with Europe being 5 million behind because of the inability of the region. After 40 months, the PS5 is an estimated 776,000 units behind the PS4. Less than a million behind, dude. They're going to catch up. They're going to catch up and pass it. Like, if you know every single time you boot up Helldivers and you commit to working on the major order that you're going to walk away with a bundle of stuff, a pile of metals, a pile of currency, a pile of samples, you're going to do that. Generosity is not going to drive you away from the game. It's not going to make you say, yeah, well, I got all my medals and I got all my currency and I got all my samples. I'm not going to play the game anymore. No, you would go and you would do other things. You would find new things to do. This is so satisfying. This is one of the reasons that I like that they changed the meta in this game is when I'm trying out the recoilless rifle here and this was my first one-shot kill on a charger. Like, I actually finally pulled it off. Like, I landed the headshot and down he goes. Like, that's a satisfying feeling. And that wouldn't have happened if I was still rocking a railgun. I'll deal with a crappy planet if I'm properly rewarded. Right, like, you would run a strike that you didn't really enjoy in Destiny if you knew there was the chance you'd get something really good, especially if the gun dropped every time. Their loot generosity philosophy was always my, was always, was always the thing that frustrated me the most. Alright, I'm gonna switch chat to members only. We're gonna chill for 30 members and just talk with, uh, with, with, for 30 minutes and just talk with members before we go, uh, to the Silk Song stream. We might actually do this for 15 minutes. Depends on how it goes. Uh, feel free to gift members, uh, and bring them into the chat right now. They cannot talk if they're not a member. It's a great time to gift members. It's a great time to hit the 25 spot because then I give five. That'll get us even closer to our goal of, uh, of 2300 for the week. We're actually already really, really close. So uh, keep smashing all the buttons. While you're at it, if you haven't smashed like yet, double check and make sure it saved your like. We only need 28 more to hit 300. And now's the opportunity for you to ask me about anything about gaming. If there's other topics or things that have been going on, feel free to ask. I was more annoyed to see my friend who was crazy good RNG in every game get a roll with it and Yoten on his first run. Right, there's always the guys that seemingly have like the best RNG in the world. I also think they bump your drop rates on certain items if you play less. That was always um, seemingly... Uh, that always seemed like a pretty easy... You know? Great dream, brother. Thank you. Look at Hellmire. Nobody wants to effing go there, but I'll drop down for some medals, especially if a major order is there and it gives us 50. Well, I was saying that the major order should be should scale up according according to your engagement. That's what I think should happen. I think the more you engage with the major order, the the the, the faster it should go up. Asmund would call that winner's win. What's he mean by that? Winners win. Hellmire's a fun planet. Fire tornadoes look cool. <laughs> yeah, the meteorites sounded really cool. Thankfully, they patched them. When they first introduced meteorites, it was freaking terrible. There's no power fantasy without power. That's certainly true. Would you still rock the rail gun if they had buffed the recoilless in the EAT? I feel like if they were to revert the rail gun nerf, it would have little impact. I mean, there are still times where I think the rail gun feels great because especially if you run it in unsafe mode, it still feels pretty effective. Justin with three months as a member says, Lona, I've been watching you since the D1 days and have always lurked. Glad to see how far you've come and how much adversity you've overcome. I appreciate that, Justin. Thank you very much. I saw a clip last night of a guy that was like, who's your role model? He's like, you are. He's like, me? He's like, why me? He's like, I just recently kind of had to put my life back together. He's like, because watching you get back up was inspiring. And I was like, okay. I kind of get that, you know? If people are like me and they just assume that you have to do the major order to get the medals, it wouldn't be a hard change. I like the idea of scaling with engagement. 
I, I think that's just a needed change. I think if you want people to engage with the major orders, you've got to give them a reason to. You know? Asman's out of touch lately. He's losing it. What do you mean? Why is Asman out of touch? Why is he losing it? What's he saying that you think he's out of touch on? It means it sucks to suck. Oh, when RNG is generous, winners win. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> I enjoyed the OG meteors. Oh, I hated them. You had to run a shield generator. It was the most effective way. I was like, all right, here are the meteors. And you'd plop down a shield generator. It was war- it was better to do that than try to run around. I took a week off, came back, had medals. You did you were you logging in to make sure that you still got them? Draxon says total noob here. So the same weapon will deal the same damage for the level one and the level twenty player. So the level twenty simply gets access to better weapons. Better weapons, more weapons, better stratagems, more stratagems, yes. You have more things at your disposal. So the orbital beam that I really like having for chargers, or just when there's a pesky bug hole that opens and I just want to throw it down and keep moving because the beam will basically kill everything. Like, you're not going to be able to get that if you're a really low level. I'm going to have stratagems that are really awesome. You know, weapons I can pull out like the recoilless rifle or the EAT rocket or the railgun. You're not going to have any of that. Difficulty does not affect the damage output of, of you or the incoming damage from the enemies. It affects how many enemies are there. So... That's pretty much it. All right, guys, I'm going to give you 10 minutes and we're going to go to this upload. Uh, We've not missed our streak on the goal of 25 uh, for like a year and a half now. So help us make sure we keep that streak. But I'm going to give us 10 minutes. I'm going to get everything set up and we're going to go in 10 minutes to the the Silk Song upload. And then we'll after that, we'll be in writer's room. That's a great reason to upgrade. Uh, That's the thing that we do at the end of every day where you can help us plan the next day's shows. Now, you're not just helping us plan it. You get to kind of listen to the process of like how a monologue take shape how an upload takes shape how we kind of plan everything as uh, as creature said you get to see how the bread is made i'm going to set that up now and uh let's see here that's going to be members that's going to be private yeah we're going to go at 11 45 we're going to go a little bit earlier today um and so you got 10 minutes to get 13 more gifted members to maintain our streak uh you also have 13 minutes to ask me anything there's a lot of topics in gaming going on right now and this is your opportunity to see what i think about them and Stone Spire says, come on, boys, let's hit this streak. We've not missed it. Takes us to 13 out of 25. Every journey starts with one. Thank you so much, Stone Spire. So, so generous lately with those single gifteds, man. Appreciate you very, very much. All right, let me get this upload ready. Okay. And we're going to go down here. And here, and here, and here. So we set it for tomorrow at noon. Schedule. The Slugger was one gun that I looked forward to. It was great until the nerf yesterday. That is always going to be a problem, right? That's always going to be an issue when Sorcerer gifts a member and gets us a little bit closer, takes us to 14 members out of 25. Thank you so much, Sorcerer of... Well, you were Sorcerer of Havoc, you're not anymore. And then another one from Joker Quinn. There it is. That's tempting a 10 bomb. 15 out of 25. You guys are the absolute best. Thank you so, so much. And I got to set it for today. What's today? The third and 1145. We're going to update that. And then we're going to update this to go back to it when it's done. And then we're going to update this to go to it when it's done. just doesn't update. I gotta refresh the dashboard every time. Just something's gotta be nerfed doesn't mean it's bad. Slugger's still good. Well, I don't necessarily think either of you are incorrect, right? RGB gifts a member and takes us to 16 members on the day. Just 9 away from 25. 25 and my 5 is 30. That's really gonna help us at least yeah, that'll get us a, a, a nice chunk closer to the 2300 making it a little bit easier if we try to hit it uh, tomorrow. Let me set up redirect. No, no, no. That's the wrong one. Redirect to the Silk Song video. And another one from Dude with a Drum Set. We're going to single gift walk this all the way there. 
we only need eight more thank you guys so so much for making sure we maintain that streak what do i expect from the new playstation uh literally covered that this week um the ps5 pro uh the death of 30 fps I'm, I'm not sure why that's happening that's the second time now the day after i cover something somebody asked me about it are you guys not seeing the videos in your feeds if you're not seeing some of the videos in your feeds make sure you're in the discord that happened yesterday there was at least two regular people like names i recognize are like hey what do you think about this and it's like i literally just did a show and an upload on that like i don't know if it's not hitting your feeds if it's not hitting your feed make sure you check the uh the sub thank you so much mickle gifting a member taking us to 18 members on the day seven away thank you so so much we're single gifting it all the way up you guys got six minutes before we shift gears here to the upload uh let me change this thumbnail too so it doesn't show that we're live there we go the secret is to not expect anything you'll get more enjoyment when you go that way well right the way is easy to the man with no preferences right i mean that you know get very taoist about it yo a single coming in from patrick q to 19 I mean, the, you could certainly approach the game that way. I think it's okay, though, for people to say, I like this, I don't like this, and to voice their opinion. I think that feedback is obviously helpful to the developer. Michael, I'm sorry, Michael. Michael. <laughs> I always do that. That's like, the, that's like the 18th time I've done that to your name. I'm so sorry. Michael. Yo, Victor Mayhem with 35 months. Celebrating 24 years with the wife this week out in Palm Springs, Cali. But I do miss drive, uh, diving for the daily... Uh, I don't get to play as often as I like, but I'm very much drawn to Helldivers gameplay. Thank you so much, Victor. And Stone Spire gifts one. And just like that, 20 and 25 happens because a five bomb comes in from Toasted Notes. Thank you so much. The streak is alive. We kept it alive. You guys went crazy yesterday, and we maintained the streak today. And that's all we can really ask for. Thank you guys so, so much for doing that. Let me do that. Let me do that. There's the five I owe you guys. And in five minutes, we're going to go to this upload about Silk Song. While you're at it, if you've been lurking this morning or hanging out or you just walked in the door, smash that like button. It helps us out. We could easily hit that 300 like milestone right now. I guarantee you. We got 18 people that could smash that button that have not yet already. You have to upgrade to the full member tier. It's an extra dollar. Yes, if you want to come to the writer's room, if you want to come to Friday Night Streams with Madam, you have to upgrade. And upgrading is really, really easy. It's it's a $6 member tier instead of a $5 member tier. And that gets you into the writer's room. You get to see how the bread is made. That gets you into Friday Night. My wife is going to be playing Stellar Blade this week. Um, And there you go. You just go to youtube.com forward slash paid memberships there's just an underscore after paid youtube.com forward slash paid underscore memberships and you go there and you should be able to adjust your membership there you should be able to if you're upset over the uh, the slugger nerf try the dominator eugene's telling people to try out the dominator if you are uh if you're frustrated about that let me give you guys a count. See how close we got to the weekly goal. I need to figure out the name of that game. It's like Jump King, but you can play together with another person. 2247. We're basically 50 members away from the goal. We're really close to the 2300. So that's the first goal of the month. You guys got us there. Right there on the edge. Sorcerer says, everybody needs to upgrade. You're missing so much content. Um... Yeah, j- just to be totally transparent with you guys, we would really like to see right now approximately 500 people can come to a member stream with Madam or a writer's room. About 500 people out of the entire member pool. We would really like to see that milestone of 600. Let's get another 100 people to catch the vision, to upgrade. I'm not trying to get an extra dollar out of you. What we're wanting to do is get more people in the paid funnel so that when we gift, new people are getting those gifted. A lot of you guys ride gifted every month, and we want that to be there for you if you need it. If you don't need it, and you're like, hey, I can pick up my own membership, really, it makes room for more folks. We're super generous. I gifted 
I don't even know, like twenty twenty thousand dollars worth of members or something ridiculous last year to the to the channel. Why? Because we believe in letting people kind of get a sample, get in, try it out. We're very generous. We gifted so many members last year. And if you're like, hey man, I need those gifted memberships. I really appreciate them. We're we're glad that you're here. But if you're like, yo, brother, I could pick up my own membership, it makes room for others. Thank you so much, Lord Horg. That is Agents of Chaos taking us to 26 members on the day. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to get the 50 members in... uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to get the 50 members in two minutes, but there it is. 26 out of 50. Thank you so much, sir. I'll be spamming a link in a second in the stream uh, chat. That is the Silk Song video that we're heading to. I've got a theory about what's going on with Silk Song, all right? And they're tweeting about it today. Sarah Bond is tweeting about it today. Michael with 22 months says, Writer's room to hear creature be correct forever. Hellstuck? Yeah, isn't it Hellstuck or something like that? It's like a two-player, uh, it's like a two-player game. A two-player jump king. All right, I'm going to spam the link in chat. That's where we're headed. If uh, if the link, uh, if you don't click on the link and the redirect doesn't work, it'll be the featured video on the stream. I will see you guys over there in the premiere. Thanks so much. And uh, make sure when you go over to the premiere that you smash a like button when you get over there. It's really helpful for a brand new upload to get that kind of support. All right, I'll see you guys over there.